Hi, this is Karen Alari, and welcome to part two of my painting video, Yellow Broom Spring. Here are the reference photos, photo number one and photo number two, which is where I got the barn from. So we're going to go back in and continue to work on these mid-ground yellow broom bushes. Again, we're keeping the detail soft and the edges soft adding a little bit of that yellow back into the background as well as if there's some of these bushes growing back there. The next step is to start with our foreground bushes which was really what this painting was all about was those beautiful bright yellow blooms and the orange new orange leaves of, of uh, the bushes there in the foreground as well as that soft blue and green in the background and it's always good to Keep in mind, keep in your mind what it is that struck you about the scene and, and what why you wanted to paint it in the first place. So what I'm doing is just adding interest to the foreground. I'm using my liner brush and keeping my strokes very active and loose. And I think if you do that, the, the strokes you're, that you're putting down on the, on the painting, the energy itself in the strokes adds energy to the painting. It, if you paint everything very tightly and loosely, I mean tightly, you come up with a painting that's kind of tight. Because if you keep your hand loose and moving, that movement translates into the painting. Especially when you're doing these sticks and branches and twigs, where they grow in a big tangle and, and there's nothing really symmetrical or, or even about them. And in order to keep that looseness, you got to keep your hand loose, move the brush around in your hand, try it from different angles, sideways, top to bottom. So I started by putting in the dark dark twigs and now I'm doing some medium value twigs and then I'll come over the top and put in some very light sides to some of these twigs that I've already put in. That'll give the, the feeling of depth and roundness to the twigs and also a sense of the light coming and, and sparking them. Darks are, are, you have to be careful with your darks because you don't want them to get too dull. So the mixture I use for my darks is Thalo Blue, Alizarin Crimson, and Quinacridone Azo Gold. And those are all transparent colors and so they keep the dark very transparent and keep it from getting dull looking. I'll also in the darks you may notice I put some almost pure alizarin crimson down in the bottom. Uh, wherever there's a dark area on my painting I'll oftentimes put little bits of pure alizarin crimson or pure ultramarine blue just to liven them up. Here I realized as I started putting down my green leaves in my foreground bushes that that bank of trees wasn't dark enough. In order to see the light bright colors that I want to have in there, the background's going to have to go darker. Because if I go lighter with the leaves, that means I'm going to add more white. And then they're just going to get more washed out. I don't want that. I want these foreground colors to be very bright and vivid. And so if I'm going to keep them very chromatic, not very much white in them, then the background's going to have to go darker. And that's how you have to make those adjustments, regardless of what your photo might tell you. You have to make those adjustments as you go on, um, as the painting develops and, and the painting tells you what it needs. I'm working very thickly with thick paint in this area. Um, the background was very smooth. I, I would oftentimes take a damp brush and smooth out the edges because I want that to recede. But now that we're in the foreground, I want those big brush strokes to show and I want the paint to be thick. So I'm going back to my palette often and, and putting lots of paint onto my brush in order to create that thickness. Um, acrylic paints, one thing they tend to do more so than oil paints is they settle back down into the canvas. So you have to put the paint on very thickly if you want texture and thickness on your painting. I'm adding some white. I want to end up with just little sparkles of white here and there to 
give a sense of sunshine. This wasn't a sunny day. It was really a kind of an overcast day in early spring. You, there weren't a lot of shadows being being laid down, you know, in the in the landscape. The color values were pretty close, but there still was some sun, and I want to bring attention to these foreground flowers. So I want some dark darks and some light lights. So I laid down those little spots of almost white, but I covered over most of them. In the final painting, there'll just be be a few of them left. One thing I'm doing with this thick paint also is I'm in some areas I will take three different colors, a dark, a medium, and a light um, version of, of these oranges that I'm, I'm doing. And I'll put them in three different piles and then run my brush through all three piles to pick up a little bit of that color of all three of those colors. And when I put down a brush stroke, it just it'll have a little random bit of each color in it and um, that makes it look a little more loose and natural as well. Going back to my rigor brush again making those loose branches putting some action and activity in the foreground trying to make sure I vary the directions have them have the strokes going left have them going right up down always striving for that that sense of um, a natural setting which is very unsymmetrical and sort of chaotic. I'm putting in these bright greens now. The, that yellow broom bush has such a wonderful vibrant green in the springtime and so I'm putting that color down and uh, adding some lighter, some darker, some medium and making sure I get those those vivid greens in there adding some of that green back to the background grasses here I'm putting in the shadow color of the yellow. I'll, I'll always do that. I'll put the shadow color first and then put some of the medium vibrant color and then a little bit of the light light color and keep going back and forth and playing with those layers on layers of, of blossoms and bushes. So I'm putting in that. And I got that yellow by taking my uh, cadmium yellow, adding a little ultramarine blue and um, a little bit of glycerin crimson to it. Uh, most of my greens are going to be start out with a phthalo blue and a cadmium yellow. That makes a very uh, rich, bright, true green. I don't use any tube greens. I like to mix all my greens. And then once you start with that true green, you can dull it down, you can brighten it up, you can make it more blue or more yellow depending on on what you're trying to match. I'm just putting in little bits I want. This is the fun part of the painting to me. This is really why I wanted to do the painting was these yellow blooms on this bush that were so bright and full and rich. So having a lot of fun just dabbing in the colors, trying to keep the paint real thick and keep the colors real vibrant and active. So sense of these dancing blossoms on a spring day and it's a very cold winter day today so I had fun painting this and remembering springtime adding more of that bright green as the acrylic paint dries it always dries darker and so oftentimes as you're comparing one area of your painting to another you have to go back in and adjust the brightness and the lightness so that they are relatively uh, the relativity between the colors is right. Adding some more shadow back into those background trees, some grays, some neutral colors. Um, if you have more of the neutral color, that also makes your bright colors pop more. At this point in the painting, I'm really just looking at it and finding areas that catch my eye. And if they catch my eye in a bad way, then I'll go in and soften an edge or or change it up a little bit or or I might see an area that needs more attention so I'll, I'll add. And right now I'm just continuing to add. I looked at the reference and I realized I wanted even more of those yellow blooms in the corner. I didn't want that corner to be too dark and heavy there. 
So I'm first putting in the shadow color and then coming, then I'll come back in with the lighter color. It's almost pure cadmium there that I'm using. I noticed that I used a lot of my uh, Hansa yellow in this, which is my cool yellow. Oftentimes um, I'll use Azo gold and cadmium yellow a lot more, but this bright spring fresh green really called for that cool yellow, much more so than a lot of landscape paintings, which will have the warmer yellows or the gold. A few more blossoms, a few more twigs, adding back in some darks. Few more dark twigs. It's just about to the end of this painting. Oh, that's right, I came in here and I'm adding uh, my barbed wire. And earlier I had had the fence post coming in at an angle, but you can see I've covered that fence post up entirely. So uh, I'll came back in at this point and I added a fence post in that mid-ground bush and a little, just a little suggestion of barbed wire. It's always kind of fun. The barbed wire gives it that country feel, but you don't want the barbed wire to be a straight line across. You want it to be very broken, a little dark, a little medium, a little light, and uh, that gives you the impression of the barbed wire. I went back in and adjusted that branch that's going right off the edge of the uh, painting. You want to make sure that your compositional elements go right off the edge. You don't want anything to start stop right at the edge of your painting. But I came back in with some light color and uh, lightened it up a little bit so it wasn't a thick line. Added a little highlight to the barn and then came into those background hills. There was a dark area that was that was too dark and was capturing my eye. So I went back in and softened that as well. Adding more of that bright spring green again to the foreground. A little shadows under those bushes and signing my name. And that's it. And another happy few hours spent and another happy little painting. Yellow Broom Spring. I'll put some uh, contact info on the screen pretty soon. You can uh, check out some of my other paintings or uh, contact me. And thanks a lot for watching my painting and hope to see you next time.